Okay, at the end of the last video, Napoleon had won two great victories against Barclay's army. He had advanced to Minsk, which he took the fortress, and halted there. Barclay, miraculously, was able to retreat across the Drissa. So, I've picked the chit for the next turn, and it's the coalition who can move, and they have a coalition number of one which means more or less most of the coalition troops are going to be able to move. Now at this point, I think the only thing the Russians can do is fall back. Barclay certainly has got to fall back, maybe absorb these detachments as he moves, probably end up at Smolensk. We've got a force at Kiev, the army of Poland, and we have Wittgenstein over here too. So... I think just generally the Russians are going to have to fall back on all fronts. Um, I think the game is skewed already to a huge degree, but the Russians might be able to salvage it. So let's catch the video after I've moved the Russians. Okay, this is the situation after the Russians have moved. I moved Chichkov and his corps, who was at Odessa, more or less abandoned that, and he scooted north as fast as he can. The army of Poland stayed at Kiev and Barclay, as I mentioned, retreated back to Smolensk, picked up those detachments and reinforced the corps that he had. Now his army is getting stronger, but it's still woefully deficient. He ever had to um, encounter Napoleon. And I picked up Wittgenstein and moved him to Riga. The most embarrassing move was Bagarachin, who was here. He was really caught because uh, Napoleon cut him off from Barclay. And he had the Pripyat Marshes here, which cost two mood points, so he had to scoot around and get here. Although he doesn't have too much to worry from Schwarzenberg who only has um, oh, two core. Could be interesting. Um, of course, with the army of Germany there, too, he could pursue Bukharachin. But that is the Russian move, and uh, we'll see where it goes. And pick the next chit. Okay, now the next chit pulled was the Empire Land 3, so the Napoleon's forces will be moving next. I was under the false impression that cards could only be played in the um, the event phase in the spring, but that's incorrect. Checking the rules, I found out you can play certain cards during the action phase. So it makes sense for the Russians to play this one, Holy Russia. Russia has been invaded, of course, and I'm able to place several new militia corps and an infantry corps on the map, plus some leaders. So I'll do that now before the French move. Now for the French, I'm sorely tempted to move Schwarzenberg against Bogorachin, but I know that the forces are very equal, and uh, I doubt if Schwarzenberg is up to the task. So I'll probably move most of the French rear units up. I could move Napoleon again, and he could be right up to what? One, two, three, three, four, five. He could be right up to adjacent to Smolensk. But then he would have to roll for attrition. And he's beginning to leave his supplies behind, so I don't think that's too prudent. So I'll move the rear echelons up and move a force towards Riga. Because remember, I discussed a strategy of maybe going for St. Petersburg instead of Moscow. Now that might play into the hands of the Russians, I don't know. I just know that from my experience with past Russian campaign games. Moscow is a long way away up here. St. Petersburg psychologically seems closer. That might be the better move. So I'll move the French and uh, show you the video after they've moved. Okay, we're picking up the video after the French have moved. Nothing really earth shaking here. Victor's corps moved up from Prussia. 
Like now how to establish depots and lines of supply, of course, for the Guerra and Garami. You have to be within four movement points of a detachment, and there's your supply line to the Grand Army. Poniatowski has moved up, the Army of Italy has moved up, and MacDonald has moved up adjacent to Riga. So all of the French forces have taken their first activation, which also means Poniatowski should have an activation marker on him too. I decided uh, Schwarzenberg just wasn't up to attacking uh, Bagrachin, they're too equal. So that technically ends the first turn because I don't want to have any of the forces go for a second activation and have to check for um, attrition. So that's the way things stand. Napoleon had his two great victories. We'll be going into the, what, summer turn? Yeah, and uh, we'll take those activation markers off and uh, see who moves first. Okay, we're actually in the autumn turn now. All of the activation markers are being removed. I put the Russian reinforcements on. Not much, little piddly things. Although there is one anomaly here. I'm not sure how to do it. I get this a lot with the large games. It says replenishments to the armies. Moscow, 2002, and or St. Petersburg, 0702, four infantry steps. But I don't have armies right now in Moscow or St. Petersburg, so... Um, I don't know. I guess I don't get those replenishments unless they are at Moscow or St. Petersburg, so... It's a little unclear there. But it says 20.53. Let me take a look at that. Well, that's interesting. It says C 20.5.3, but there is no 20.5.3. Unless it's here in the uh, playbook. Let's just take a quick look. No, I don't see it. So I'll just assume that you get four infantry steps at St. Petersburg or Moscow if I ever end up with armies there. So it's the autumn of 1812. It's only a 13, uh, three turn scenario, so it'll be short. I guess technically Napoleon is a little bit behind schedule because he's not at Vitebsk or Smolensk. But he's got a huge army, and like I said, maybe he's going to go over St. Petersburg. So we'll draw a chit here, and we get Empire Land 3. So Empire Forces, with generals of three or more, are going to be able to move, which will include Napoleon, of course. So uh, I think we'll see lots of activity this turn. Okay, I'm going to activate MacDonald. He's going to move directly on to Riga. Now, Wittgenstein doesn't feel like sticking around, so he's going to try to withdraw. I'll roll first, then I can check the modifiers. He's got to get a 10, then he did. So, Wittgenstein will withdraw up to here, and MacDonald is on Riga. Now, he'll lay siege to the place. I'll do a siege roll, and we'll see what we get. Yeah, I moved MacDonald on to the uh, fortress, and he did roll, and fortunately for him, he didn't succeed, and it's still under siege. So Riga is holding out. Wittgenstein bought him some time. Okay, I moved Ney up to the right of Wittgenstein, but I'm still learning the logistics here. You have to be within four moving points of a depot, and if I move Ney there, he will not be. So that's not good. So I'm not sure how to stay in supply by going up there. I guess you have to have a string of depots up there too. And I don't think I've got them. So that would mean Ney would have to go for uh, attrition, which I certainly don't want him to do. Well, I'll go here instead. Then he'd be within supply. But uh, I can see there's logistical problems to even go up there too. So let's see what the Grand Army can do in all of Napoleon's other forces. Okay, I think I'm getting the hang of the logistics now, but uh, boy, you have to be careful, which is good. You should have to be careful in Russia with depots. So you um, stay in supply by leaving detachments. 
So I've acti activated uh, Eugene's army of Italy, and he's going to go six. But when he goes here, one, two, he'll drop off a detachment. That costs him a movement point. So one, two, three, four, five, and that's as far as he'll go. And we'll put another activation marker on him. So as you advance, you're going to have to leave detachments behind to keep your supply line intact. Make sure that that's correct. Yep, that's right. Now Napoleon and the Army of Germany will probably move. And we'll see what uh, they do. Okay, I've moved the Army of Germany up to here. They'll still be within uh, supply. One, two, three, four, and so on back. Uh... Guess Napoleon is going to go for Vitebsk. He should be able to take that with no problem. Yes, Napoleon goes to Vitebsk and he will assault the fortress. We'll see if he can take it. Okay, that's a weird one. I haven't seen this result before. Uh, Napoleon did assault and he got honors of war, which says the fortress is given honors of war. It surrenders and the besieged force returns on the map during the next spring reinforcement segment. In this case, there are no um, defenders, so it just surrenders. So Vitebsk has fallen. Now looking ahead, one, two, three, four, five, six, so well, Moscow would have to force march to even get to Moscow. So because I was a bit tardy on turn one, even though Napoleon won these great victories, he's behind schedule to capture Moscow. So I may be forced to go to St. Petersburg and establish a supply line there. So I might have to move secondary forces up to St. Petersburg. So by going too far east without planning the campaign enough, um, I may lose this one, or Napoleon may lose this one, even though he had a spectacular start. But that's for the future. Let's look at the other French forces and see what I can do. Okay, I've definitely made some rookie mistakes, that's for sure. Now I've got Poniatowski, he's moved up there. There is a detachment here, so his supply line is fine, but I think I'm just going to run out of time in this scenario. I'm going to be forced to force march, which I'm not looking forward to. Not much else the French can do. I've moved just about everybody. The question is, do I force march now? Maybe I should and get it over with, because... Um, the Grand Army is still huge, but I'm so afraid of those losses. I'm not familiar with the attrition table, but I may be forced to do so. Anyway, uh, before that happens, we have the uh, chit pick to see who is moving next. And I pick, and it happens to be Coalition Naval, which you can ignore in this game virtually. I've got naval units up there at... Um, St. Petersburg, but they don't do anything, so I'll just pass. The next jet is the, uh-oh, Empire Land. Well, that means Napoleon can move, but if he does, he will be force marching. I better take a look at those rules before I do any force marching. Okay, well, as I suspected, the uh, force march is not going to be pretty, but I think Napoleon has got to do it. This may be a bad mistake. He's going to go for the um, moving again. That means he's going to check attrition. Now, there must be a marker here to show activation over. Yeah, I'll do that. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five, and land on Skov. Yeah. But before I can even do a battle, I'm going to have to roll for attrition. I count the number of steps he has, then I roll. Let's see how he fares out. Yeah, he's not rolling on the worst table. It's not the best either. It's on the 10 to 13 table, and we will be adding one because he's marched uh, in Russia. Roll the die. Well, that's pretty good. He ends up with a five, which means one core is flipped. So I think he got away cheaply. I'll flip a core in Napoleon's army. Checking Napoleon's army, that definitely hurt. The last one of his cuirasses had to be flipped over, so 
The Karen Darmi is not as strong as it was before. But I've painted myself into a corner. I think I've still got to keep going. This may be a mistake. I don't know. Um, God. I could keep them there for a second seeds to bring, bring that down. Not to do attrition, no. Yeah, what the heck. I'm going to roll for attrition here and do a second activation. Yeah, McDonald's force was so low, he suffered no attrition. Let's do that siege roll again. Except it's a level two siege here. Rolls two dice, and what you get? It's a seven, which is a no effect. Now, wait a minute. There's some dice roll modifiers here. Yeah, he does have artillery superiority, so it's really eight. And another level of solution of level of siege, so it's really ten. That's an A result, which is assault. Standard one round battle. The fortress surrenders if it's a demoralized core, or if every SP included the permanent forces are eliminated. So uh, McDonald takes Riga and he'll destroy it at the same time. Well, this may be a mistake, but I'm going to play real conservatively here, and uh, I won't do any more activations. So it's the Garand Army that took the chances, not the other armies. So, that's it for the French. Let's pick another chit and see what's going on. We have coalition land chit number one, so that means the Russians will be moving. Well, I'm going to activate the Barclay at Smolensk. Now, since he got some of his cores back, replenished, um, and he feels he can take on this army of Germany, and I think he'll try. Let's see where that goes. So Barclay will go down here. One, two. No. I don't think the army of Germany is interested in um, intercepting him, so Barclay will land on him. And I don't think the German army wants to fight either. So let's do an avoidance roll. We'll roll first, then check the modifiers. We normally need 10 or greater to withdraw. He gets an 11, so that's no problem. He will withdraw one hex. That puts Barclay here. Barclay's got one, two, three, four. He's got two moving points left. He's going to watch his supply, too. He's just in supply to Smolensk. Actually, that's not even true. No, I guess it is because it's a fortress. Uh, Barclay will have to stop. So he's pushed the German army back, which means they're not going to be bothering white Russia here at all. And we'll put an activation rocket on him to show that he has moved. Okay, over on the Livonia front, we'll activate Wittgenstein, and he'll march to St. Petersburg to join with this force for the big defense of St. Petersburg. So we'll put first activation marker on him. And that whole shebang will be here. That stack is getting unwieldy. That's the one thing about these strategic games with lots of counters. The stacks can get a little wonky. Okay, the army of Poland is feeling emboldened because, uh, well, there's no French on that front. So they're going to move down six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and join Bagration's second army. I see a counterattack here in the woods in the future, so that's it. Chichigov, he's got another core. Why not join the party? He'll go six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, yep, I think I goofed this game for the French. And here I was, I thought the... Uh, Russians didn't have a chance. Okay, so that's the Russian turn. I won't bother moving those guys in the rear. Game will be over long before we get there. So that will end the Russian turn. Now, unless the French want to do some more 
activations, which would be force marching and attrition, that'll end the turn. So we'll go on to the winter turn, which is the last turn of the game. And I think, uh, I guess it's all going to depend on St. Petersburg. The question is whether Napoleon can take it or not. Now let me just recheck the victory conditions to make sure I'm still in line with them. Well, like I said, the game is not going to go like I thought it was. And I can see I really blew it as the French. Which teaches us all to always keep in mind the victory, you know, victory conditions. It says here the Empire wins if it owns or occupies Warsaw, no problem. Vilna, no problem. Riga, that's a problem. And either St. Petersburg or Moscow. Now, um, okay, they've got Riga. Well, maybe it isn't quite over. It will depend on um, St. Petersburg. If they do not capture St. Petersburg, the Russians will win. Because there's no way they're going to get Moscow now. So we're kind of going into the end phase of the game. As usual with most learning games, you're going to make lots of mistakes. Don't understand the concepts until you try them out. So I'll play this one out. I'll go to the last turn in winter, see who moves first. But it's really going to depend on whether St. Petersburg will hold out or not. It will be against the Grand Army, against the man. So we'll see where that goes. Now, we do have those replenishments rules that I talked about before. To armies, well, see, that's a vague term. It says two armies. Technically, I don't have an army unit at St. Petersburg. There are forces. So I don't know if these four free infantry steps that I get apply there. I'll see if I can find it in the rules, but I kind of doubt that I will. Okay, we remove the activation markers, and we're going to begin the last turn of the game, the winter of 1812. And I think it's all going to depend on uh, St. Petersburg, the way I see it. Unless, of course, the Russians can pull a dirty one and get at Vilna. You never know. Actually, there's this army in which you might be able to do it. Anyway, let's see who was first. The chip is... Empire land. Well, the French are going to move first. So they're going to get the chance to attack Petersburg. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so we activate the Grand Army. And it lands on St. Petersburg. What a mess this is going to be. And Poniatowski will join. Did I take Skov? I don't even remember. Um, I don't remember. I don't feel like going back to find out. Uh, anyway, anyway. <laughs> Napoleon can get there by another means. Just go one, two, three, four. Anyway, Poniatowski too. So we're going to have this mess. The skyscraper stack. I'll dissect it down and we'll do one big battle for St. Petersburg and see what happens. That'll probably be the game right there. Okay, after doing all the math, picking the cards, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the French, as usual, with the man in command, got some pretty nice modifiers. In the end, the French are going to be adding plus seven to their die roll. The Russians are going to be adding plus one. But they got a good car, the Russians. They got this one, um, what was it, about nullifying the, yeah, morning fog. Neither side may use their artillery points, which helped the Russians more. But the man is going to use two cards. The redoubt, adding one if there's an army, which it is, and horse artillery. That's how you got the plus seven. So now we're going to roll the die and do this massive bo uh, battle for St. Petersburg, which will virtually decide the game. And as it turns out, it's a major battle too, so um, it's going to be a high casualty one. Rolling now for the combat results. French adding seven to the dice. You get a 10, that's going to be curtains. Okay, 10 plus 7, 17. Wow, 7 CL result. That's a disaster. That's going to be 7 steps losses for the Russians, one of which must be cavalry, and a leader check. Let's roll for the Russians. They're adding uh, 1. And they get a 7, which is not going to help them at all. Two steps. 
total defeat for the Russian army. The Russian army would be allowed to retreat, I believe, into the fortress, but I'm not going to even bother with that. I'm going to declare this to be a French victory. Now, I guess I should give the Russians a chance to get Vilma back, so yeah, why not? Let's pick a chit and see what happens. Okay, the next chit is the coalition land, which probably means the Polish army here and Bavretchen's second army. Let's see what they can do. I see move one move they can do here. Polish army can go one, whoops, no can't. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my god, no, the, the marsh here screws them up. Right. They have to attack Lemberg. No, they don't have enough moving points to get to that depot and up to Vilna. That's done. Yeah, they could probably just do one big battle here at Lemberg, but who cares? It's only a couple of cores versus a few cores. The game is virtually over. So I'm going to call it here. Uh, it is a French victory. Um, kind of no surprise when I, they had those big victories at the start, those two big battles. And uh, they retrieved it by taking St. Petersburg. Okay, so in summary, what have I learned from playing this game? Well, I've learned that I need to know the rules a lot better than I do. I don't know them all that well. Um, I think you have to learn the logistics of the game very well. How you're supplied, how you make depots, how they work. You've got to get that under your belt. The rest sort of falls into place. You can follow it by just following the sequence of play. So would I play this game again? I sure would. But I need to study it more. I would probably still do scenarios. I've never played a scenario uh, in Spain in any of the Napoleonic games I have. And I've been watching that uh, Richard Sharp uh, series from a few years ago. And it's got me in the mood to study the Spanish campaign to some degree. So maybe I'll do that later. So that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. hope you learned something. You might have learned that, whoa, this game isn't for me. Or you might have learned, wow, i got to get this game. I don't know. Um, so it is what it is. It certainly is a nice looking game. And uh, all I can say is thank you for watching.